Okay, cool. Okay, um, so uh, before we begin, I would like to ask the deputy site manager to please, please announce the protocols for the meeting. Uh, hello, as you may have heard from the announcement, this meeting is being recorded so residents can follow along and will have access to the meeting, which will be posted on the town's YouTube channel and website. Again, provided closed captioning for people to follow along that way. The meeting is set up for residents to be able to chat directly with me. So if you have a question, please send me a message through Zoom. In addition to the opportunity for resident, resident comments at the start of the meeting, several items on the agenda are listed as public meetings, which indicates that an opportunity will be given for public comments prior to any council action. If you would like to make a comment, please send me a message on Zoom or indicate that you would like to speak using the raise hand function as we will call on you at the appropriate time. If you do make a comment, please make sure to state your name for the record and the street that you live on if you are a resident or the organization or community that you represent if you are not a resident. To make it easier for those watching to follow along, we ask that videos be turned off if you're not engaged in the council meeting discussion. I may also turn off your video, but we'll invite you to turn it back on if you're making a comment during a public hearing. Finally, if this meeting is interrupted in a way that does not allow us to continue with the council's discussions, we will end the meeting and send out a new link via constant contact to restart the meeting so the council can continue with their business. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we will begin with our public comment period. So if any resident or guest who's on Zoom or in here uh, would like to speak, uh, please let the deputy town manager now to know. Okay, we will move on to approval of the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? And I see uh Catherine knows I can see discuss the hearing on all this in favor. Um, all of the Next item is consideration of the consent agenda. Is there a motion? Move the consent agenda. Is there a second? Second. Right. Yeah, all right. Um is there a second? Hearing none, all those in favor. All those in favor. Okay. The next item. It is a public hearing to consider approval of the building permit application submitted by Alex Edinger and Jonathan Urban for the construction of a rear yard deck at the property located at 5409 Surrey Street. So we will begin. This is a hearing before the Town of Somerset Council for permit application number 239DR1RA to consider approval of the demolition and building permit application submitted by Alex Edinger excuse me, Jonathan Urban, the removal of a flagstone patio and construction of a rear yard dam on the property located at 5409 Surrey Street. The hearing will observe the following order. First, the Somerset Town staff will present their findings and submit to the record a report on the application under consideration. Next, the applicant and the representatives will present their application or comment on the report. The next, next the Somerset Town Council I have the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant or staff relevant to the application. I mean, the council should introduce all findings of fact during their comments or questions. Next, other interested parties, including town residents, will have the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant or staff only or make comments to the council, applicant, or staff. Next, the applicant will have the opportunity for rebuttal testimony after which the public comment period of the hearing shall be completed and the record closed. No new information shall be considered or submitted for the record for the record after this point. Finally, the council will deliberate and discuss among themselves the merits of the case, the findings of fact and conclusions. The council may make a motion on the permit decision. So please indicate, Let's see, I'll continue to read this one. He, he added something here. Okay, we will begin this hearing with the presentation of the staff finance reports, Mr. Deputy Town Manager. Yes, this was this report was prepared by the town manager before the meeting. Uh, he wrote to provide an assessment of the permit applica application submitted by uh, the applicants for the proposed construction project of 5409 Surrey Street. Uh, he outlined six aspects of the project. Side steps back, side step back after initial review and cons consultation with town staff. The applicant relocated side yard stairs to the rear of the property, ensuring compliance with the town side setback requirements. All building structures are within the town setback requirements with a minimum of eight feet on one side and 18 feet overall. The town project maintains a nine foot setback on one side and 19 feet overall, meeting the town code specifications. 
Number two, rear setbacks. All structures proposed to this project are comfortably within the town's 20 foot rear setback requirements. The proposed structure position 34.4 feet from the rear yard line. Three, stormwater management. The project does not trigger the need for stormwater management measures as it does not increase impervious surfaces by 150 feet or more. Additionally, the proposed deck is constructed of wood, allowing water to seep through and therefore not considered an impervious surface. In fact, the proposed plan will reduce impervious surface on the property. The, the staff and the council agreed on the interpretation that wood decks do not count towards impervious surfaces when reviewing a previous application in July at 4716 Essex Avenue. For application process, the applicant submitted a complete application within the required time frame for placement on the council meeting agenda. We obtained some interest from neighbors indicating plans were provided. By parking, adequate parking has been provided through a combination of on-site parking and street parking. And six, tree preservation. No trees are slated for removal, and the town arborist does not recommend any removals. The town arborist has assessed the plans and provided tree protection recommendations. Uh, furthermore, while the town code does not currently impose building coverage requirements, the proposed plan does not increase building coverage and remains compliant with county regulations. Given the project's compliance with town code requirements, staff recommends approval of the permit application submitted for the construction of a rear yard deck at 5409 Surrey Street. Does that conclude your report? Yes, it does. Okay, thank you. So now the applicants have the opportunity to say if you could come forward and remember to identify yourself. And then you you have the opportunity to present the application, but if you, if you can also comment on the um, before and, yeah. and, and be prepared and then be prepared to answer questions. I'll do my Thank best. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Jonathan Urban. I'm here with Alexa Sattinger, and we are proposing a rear deck at 5409 Surrey Street. Um, I think we heard a little bit of the summary um, that I think it's going to be a nice deck. It is in the rear of the house. And um, as mentioned, um, for those who are passionate about it, it does reduce the amount of impervious um, structure on our property. But um, besides that, I think there are no variances we've requested or anything that is outside um, what is uh, allowed or effective. That concludes your. Thank you. I'm happy to go into more That's detail. Perfect. That is perfect. Council, President Circa, you have a question. Um, so, thank you. It, it looks very nice. I have one question for Doug. If our town engineer, if he's on the line, I see Doug. Yeah, sorry. Right. Um, I just have one question about the, the wall behind the jacuzzi. Um, as I recall, this. Trying to look it up, couldn't find it. There are there are some building regulations that pertain to additional walls that are constructed, and like there's a ratio between how far they are from the property line and how tall they're allowed to be. And I just wanted to know if you could clarify what that regulation is and confirm that this is uh, conforming to code. Uh, can you hear me? All right. Yes. Yeah, I'm not sure what regulation you're referring to. The code says they can't have walls in the front yard except for retaining walls, but these are pretty much walls used for seating around the deck, and they're not encroaching into okay. any of the side yard setbacks. So, okay, does that help. Yep. Yeah, thank you. Just want to double check. Okay. No, no other questions. Okay. Thank you, Councilor Ball. Do you have any questions? No questions. Yeah, the member Hella. No question. Yeah, it's a member I have uh, two questions for town staff. Did uh, we get signatures from residents? I see that in the packet. I just want to confirm yes. for the record yes. that all neighbors were informed. Mm -hmm. And then again, confirm for the record that no trees are being cut for yeah. the move. That's correct. Thank you. No more question. Thank you, Councilor. Right back. Do you have any questions? No questions. Thank you. Are there comments or questions? Is any listening or testing? Okay, okay, so with that, we will. Um, this concludes the public portion of the hearing. The record is now closed. The council may now discuss and deliberate on findings of fact and conclusions of the law and may vote on the application. And then we'll turn it over to the council president to lead the deliberation. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. It looks like a very nice plan. Um, I don't have any concerns. Just go around if there are any concerns or comments that folks have, Robin. 
No, I, I didn't. I mean, I, I see also that, that Holbert has provided tree protection plans to basically fence off the trees. And that's it. I think it looks pretty straightforward and easy and not much to discuss, actually. Yep. Same. Okay. Well, then I'll, I'll make a second okay. motion. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that the council approve the building permit application submitted by Alexis Ellinger and Jonathan Urban for the construction of the year yard walk at the property located at 5409 Surrey Street. Second. Then we have the condition that they follow the uh, tree protection plan as described by our arborist. I Absolutely, that's a, that's a friendly amendment. I, I sort of assumed that was a given, but, yeah. but maybe should. Be. Let, let's have, wait a minute before anybody seconds, because I didn't I did put a second. Um, Mr. Uh, Town Attorney, is the motion of the way in second? Yes, Mr. Mayor. And can yeah, you recommend the uh, addition that Council of Bar of the tree protection plan? Yes, I'm just checking the code. I believe the, the code is okay. You're okay. And you're seconding. Okay, thank you. Is there discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for joining us tonight. The next item is our building administrator's report. Sir. Yeah, a few items to go over this evening. At 4515 Cumberland, uh, Park and Planning have completed their review and they've required that some of the uh, stormwater management proposed some weather management features be relocated to protect some of the trees in the rear of the yacht. Plans have been revised and resubmitted to the county for review, and the architect and the engine, uh, engineer will be submitting revised plans to us showing the changes that were made for park and plant. At 4515 Dorset, the property owners have submitted an application to construct a detached two-car garage at the rear of the house. The council approved the application on August 7th, and the town has issued its building permit. At 4524 Dorset, that building permit will expire in January. According to the applicant, all of the work has been completed, and the county has signed off on the building permit. Uh, a couple of the items that were included in the variance, he has stated that he's run out of money, so he's not going to install those items. Uh, and we'll be releasing the building permit uh, in a week or so. At uh, farther down on Fallstone, I incorrectly labeled it 4904, it's 4906. And at 4806 Grantham, that building permit was issued in July, but the work has not begun yet. At 5502 Grantham, a Greystone, uh, the council extended the building permit to October 1st. The applicant stated that the exterior work has been completed and the only remaining work is the installation of a new gas stove and that DPS permit is still open. At 5522 Greystone, that permit expires on October 9th and that permit is also open. And I believe Matt has been talking to the property owner about whether they need an extension or not, I haven't heard. At 5528 Trent, council is issued uh, on September 11th. The council approved that application and stormwater management plans have been sent to the county uh, with the revisions uh, required by the council. And at 5613 Warwick, that permit expires on October 13th. The uh, applicant originally submitted an application to extend the permit and to build a deck at the rear of the house. Uh, it, uh, we've contacted the applicant a couple of times and not received any reply from them. Uh, and the county permit expired in uh, July. So if we haven't heard from them by October, we'll, uh, we're assuming that permit has been closed and they're not going to be applying for an extension or for the deck permit at this time. And that concludes my report. Thank you, sir. Council President Sir, do you have any questions? No questions. Thank you, Doug. Councilor Barr. No, thanks, Doug. I have no questions. Councilor Heller. I do have a question. I'm just not, uh, um, I need to, um, uh, sorry, I was trying to find. Take your time. 
the um, Rosenthal House on Surrey. Right. Is that in here? Is that one of these? Is, is that the one that has a dumpster? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't see it on the the list, but because, I just talked to Matt about it. Because my question about that house, and maybe Doug knows, is do they need permits to do anything they're doing? Are they just doing internal stuff and you don't need a permit to do Doug, do you need a permit to what no? What's the you address can, on Surrey? Um I can't find it in here. Um which is the this is the it's, it's this the, the, it's the like house a, of Surrey and Warwick. No, Surrey Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Also. And it's um I'll tell you the number in a second. It's um it's three it's right next to our new um, Finkelstein. So it'd be 5529. That's what it would be. 5529, you've got it. It says property submitted an application to have a new deck to the rear of the existing house, but they are taking that house apart on the inside bit by bit. And I wondered if they needed a permit to do that. That's right. Doug? They don't need a permit from us to do any demolition in on the interior. They did need a permit and they've obtained a permit for the dumpster that's in the driveway uh and that permit is uh, pending with us and with the county okay because i just i've been wondering about that that's all thank you yes my only question thank you councillor kumar no question councillor roback so for that 5529 surrey street so do has the permit been approved for the dumpster Yes, they applied for a permit for dump, so they paid the fee and we issued the permit. Okay. Um, I have a question about 4815 Cumberland. Um, so it says that the engineer stated that the staff at MNCP and PC required the stormwater management plans to be revised to protect the trees at the rear of the lot. Um, so have we re-seen those stormwater management plans yet or we haven't seen that yet. Uh, I guess six months ago, they submitted the original plans and Dayland reviewed them. But those are the plans that have been since revised and we haven't received the revised plans yet. So it will do, have to go to Dayland once we get them. Do we know if they're, I mean, so, I mean, they would have until... I guess the 15th of this month, or I don't, I'm not sure if we officially changed it earlier in order to be a part of the um, council meeting for November, right? Well, they've already submitted, they've already submitted an application, but it's, the application is not complete yet. So if they make it in by the 15th and everything is in order, they can possibly make the November agenda. Okay, but we don't really know where if if that would happen as of yet. No, not till we see the plans, and then Bayland would also have to review the plans before it can be scheduled. Okay, okay, all right. I just there's a lot. There was a lot of people that have have been inquiring about that house, so I just want to make sure that you know. And we we get out the information that we have to people if we get you know if we get the revised plans for Matt to send out so that's it. Yeah, so once we get the revised once we get the revised plans, they will have to send out another notice to the adjacent residents with the revised plans. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. That's it. Okay. Thank you. We will now move to public hearing motion to consider approval. Let's not sit here. To consider approval of a three removal permit submitted by Stephen Circa and Elizabeth Thompson for the removal of a silver maple tree. It was I think the behind the table like to. You don't have to sit here. Uh, Mr. Deputy Town Manager. Town Harbor has looked at the tree in question and found significant hollows in the main trunk. Main trunks and major branches. Uh, they, he considers the tree hazardous and recommends. Okay, thank you. I, and I will, since you have indicated you wish to uh, refuse yourself, I will move to Council Member Barr. All right. Um, so, anybody, any comments? Um, let's see. 
Oh, it's a hearing. You go first. You go first. Oh, we could see you as refusals. Okay, all right. I have no questions. Okay, thank you, Councillor. I have no questions. Councillor Goodwood. I have a question. Councillor Rareback. I do have a question. I'm sorry. I just wanted to clarify does this fall under, do we need to do a tree replacement here? Where does this fit with the tree code? That we updated. Sorry for a discombobulated question, but. I guess you are just in your hair. Um, the Argos hasn't recommended replacement. Let me review the code, Mr. Moon. And they address the certain areas. You probably know. So, I've gotten a little confused with the new code with the inches of diameter, the, the change in the approval process. But regardless of that, in anticipation that we can even take this tree down, I worked at the Tree Montgomery uh, program. We planted two canopy trees in our supplementary in the spring. Okay. To, you know, so we can continue to have canopy coverage. We okay. love the trees, it's just this one tree. Yeah, you, you don't want it's another tree in that location, but too close to that. Right. You do not want to use that one. Yeah, I'm just curious. Like, I'm just trying to remember. I don't remember the code on that specific issue. So I apologize, which is where. Well, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. I think it's interesting. It's 41 inches the base. I think it requires council approval. I'm not sure if it requires. Right, it, it does. That's the code. Basically. Oh, yeah, shoot. I know this tree is not quite well. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Every day. I don't think study. the code requires replacement, from what I remember. Um, so, section 182-8F says, replanting, the mayor or town council, as the case may be, may impose replanting as a condition of permanent approval. So it's discretionary. Right. And, and what is the limit at, at the storage it requires in there in terms of the size? So, yes. Since you have it open, sorry. 24 inches. That's, I, I remember it being the 20s. Yeah. Yes. Four inches or more measured in diameter at four and a half feet above the ground. That requires the 24 permit. Four inches or more? Four inches. So, yeah, right. That, that requires a permit, but for a council review, it's 24 inches. Right? Yeah. Can you check that? Yes. Sorry to hold it up. No, no. The reason to. Twenty four inches. Okay, so sorry. Twenty four inches or less, the mayor re reviews twenty five inches or more of the council. That's reviews, and then it's up to the council's discretion among tree planting. Additionally, you're saying you did do right. you planted the tree this year, this spring. This spring. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? No other questions. Councilor Rayback, do you have any questions? No questions. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Deputy Town Manager, is any resident or guest indicated they wish to speak? Okay, with that, uh, are you prepared to make a motion? Motion to approve the tree removal permit submitted by Stephen Sarko and Ethan Thompson for the removal of the silver maple tree as recommended by the town of Is there a second? I'll second. I heard how it occurs. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. All those in favor? I see. Thank you all. You just want to stay. I'm just going to stay. Okay, thank you. The next item public hearing motion consider the adoption of a resolution establishing. 
the Summer State Youth Council pilot program for the period of January 2024 to May 2024. Mr. Deputy Town Manager. Yes, so this resolution is, takes the verbiage from the previous proposal at the work session and turns it into a resolution to begin implementing this pilot program. Okay, thank you. Council President Sir, do you have any questions? No questions. I'm just trying to move forward on this. Councilor Barr. What were, I mean, this the two things that are highlighted. Are we going to require that they be registered to vote in order to participate in the council? And um, do we want the minimum GPA? I know all the children in Somerset are above average, but nevertheless, should we have the minimum GPA? When you're asking, there's your time to ask the town manager who created this. You can debate it later. Oh, what's your recommendation then? My, the staff's uh, opinion was that at the last work session, it seemed uh, that the council was in favor of not having a GPA requirement and not having them be registered. Well, I heard one council member saying that was that only. So I wanted to make sure that all, how about the other council members who wanted to register to vote? Sorry, what's your question? Well, well, the issue is, do we want okay, Robert, right now, it's your opportunity to ask the staff about this. Then when you're debating it, when you're going to approve it, then you can discuss it. Okay, okay. sorry. Well, that, so, so do you have any other questions? No more questions. Thank you. Councilor Helen. Um, no, I can't. I can't open it. I can't open it. Take anything open. I, I did look at the stuff this afternoon, but I forgot to zero in on those things on the But of the things that we talked about, um, I just want I can't get I can't even get it on my my own. Right? Mm -hmm. You put it on the screen. But I think it's fine, you know, the way it is. Okay, well, let me go around to see if there are questions okay. that will come back again once you let me know when, when it starts. Councilor Kuma, do you have a question? Yeah, PJ. Um, so I have the same question. Mm -hmm. At the working session, we have proposed mm -hmm. the we have discussed the appointment process. Mm -hmm. I can't believe it. What we're looking to stop? Are you cool with yes. going there? This is so what we have. We have you know looked at the uh, appointment process. We have said you know we probably don't need registered to vote, and we probably don't need the GPA. Uh, and then we have talked about maybe asking them to submit. You know, part doing an application, either they submit an essay or they go through an application process. I was wondering what the staff thought of that feedback from the council, because I do see those criteria still in the in the proposed resolution. And does it matter that it's in the proposed resolution? But question of Ron, as it could be, you know, we can approve it now, but still come back and change the criteria. Sure, just take a new motion. That's Thank it. You. Okay. Those are my questions. Sorry. All right. <laughs> to to both to EJ Evelyn. Was any of the other counselors? Do I need to send it to any of the other counselors? Oh, I can't open any. Oh, we like, can't we can't open any of the stuff for some reason. I was able to open it this afternoon sure, and read through everything. But I don't know. I guess I don't know. Except for this file. Um, but I, I saw it on a document file. Councilor Rovac, can you open yours? I can. Okay. Yeah. It's discriminatory. Is it faulty equipment being provided? No. You can pay your property. I don't the system go. You can get it on either one. You just, and you can't get it on. Can't open file would be a novel reason for a resolution not um, I've seen enough of it that I have complete trouble in it. I will rely on. No, we are asking okay. questions. So right now, Councillor, hold your horse and pull The discussion. So what's your question? You have further further question. My question was: At the council work session, we proposed changes to the appointment process, and I think we were. I, I was on, on, on the phone, so I'm not 100% sure, but I think we were lodging agreement that we want required GPA and we want required even registered to vote. No. I remember that. And then we had said, why not an essay or something that kind of reflects their vision for why they want to be on the council or a question. 
Q&A process. I remember that being proposed to the staff. So I'm wondering why that is not reflected in this draft and what's the so your thinking was, on that? Uh, <clears throat> the decision was made to, it was thought that those specific requirements don't need to be in the resolution, but can still be applied. And so uh, they can be discussed afterwards and decide these exact requirements for the, uh, well, it doesn't need to be included in the resolution itself. I see. I agree. And maybe the time, do you learn? I would agree the written summary doesn't need to be in the resolution because the resolution does say they must complete an application prepared by the facilitator. So that application can include requirements for the submittal. Which we can decide at a, at a later. Yes. yes. Okay. Fine. Anyone? Okay. Councilor Rowe, back to you. Any questions? No, but I don't really think that we should require a certain GPA. I, I we took that off the table. That's okay. Then you'll you'll talk about that. Do you have any questions? Okay. No. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Manager. Is any resident or guest any who wish to speak? Uh, no. Okay. Thank you. So at this point, I will turn it over to the distinguished council president to lead the discussion, because I know you're all salivating. On the list. Wow. <laughs> so this, this, I, I, I'm actually very excited about this. This is the, the, the topic that we've been considering um, in one form or another for, for over a year now in terms of increased engagement with the youth in our town. And I think it's a great idea. And as we've demonstrated in, in other areas, we have the capacity to, to modify and improve things as, as we go. So I'm I'm very comfortable accepting this as is, and if we need to adjust or provide additional guidance moving forward, that's fine. That, that's my thought. Tom? Yeah, I, I mean, I, 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 I'm hankering for saying that they should be registered to vote. I mean, if, if they're interested in civics, then really that's the minimum standard of being interested in civics is being registered to vote. I'd want to see that if they're eligible, of course, for someone may not be 16. Um, you may not be US. The old, or, well, that's also true. Well, actually, you don't have to be. No, that's just change. Um, the the point about the essay. The only advice I'm going to give is put a word limit on it, like five hundred words and no more, because otherwise you're going to get screens. So just remember that. Thank you. Former professor telling you that. Yeah. Let me see. Thank you. Okay. Um. I don't agree that we should, they have to be registered to vote. My guess is if they want to get involved civically like this, they'll end up, they'll probably end up um, then, then, then doing that. And I think this this group is is a nurturing group and a learning group. So I would I would not say you have to you have to register to vote. Um I think it's fine to give that they should write a paragraph or two of why they want to do this. To make sure that it's just because I want students service learning hours, you know, that they they're interested in civic engagement. So that's where I stand. Other than that, I think everything is everything is fine. And, and we're not going to have the details of that application right. until later. Until later, anyhow. Hello. I'm sorry. Is it me? Yes. Today. Is well, it, it's not, uh, not you. No public. Well, yeah. Do you want to talk to them? Well, maybe. Oh, I'm sorry. Then we will have to keep um, hey. I, would, I think uh, I'm fine with the way I'm asking, but I appreciate what you were saying. I think we want to make it easier for our own supplies. So I have a high level in my framework on this. Uh, uh, question I have for the council this will be a pilot program. If, under what condition would we consider this success? What would success look like? For us. I, I'm not asking this. I, I'm curious myself. Like I, I haven't thought through it. What would be successful? You know that we have enough participation, recurring meetings. Like what would what would we consider success? Because that would be the question in front of us after a period of time whether we continue the program. I don't think we can measure. I don't think we can put that on the table. We all might see it a little differently. Yeah. Some people will say, "Well, we got two really engaged kids." You know, we we yeah. won. We hit the we hit the lottery here. But um, I think we have to get the program going. We have to build it. And while we're doing that, I think we'll be able to measure for ourselves what's success. 
maybe it's not worth it. You know, uh, you know, maybe we'll get to the point of why are we doing this? Nobody's really involved or whatever. Or maybe it's so successful we really nurture kids' involvement. So I don't think we can can answer that question yet. My two cents on that, maybe to the staff, is some programs like this may just take time to gather momentum. So mm -hmm. we should just be patient with it. And maybe there's some benchmark from elsewhere, like at the state level, what they have done, like how programs like this have gathered momentum and popularity over time. Because maybe in the initial year, there's a loop on response, but in year two, we do better. In year three, it's really flourishing. And so just wanted to put that in front of us, not just patient people. I think it's a great idea for. Just try the, the town staff assess that, monitor it, support it. Um, I think we, we could ask this to be a like a regular part of the town manager's report to the council. So just a uh, brief update. Did they meet that month or not? What, what did they discuss? Short and sweet, but just be less important. To Let's see what that's just a thought. Yeah. I just um I don't want to thank EJ for his dedication to this and really putting it together. So thank you. We appreciate it. Well said, thank you. So thank you very much. Sure. Uh no, I agree with what you guys all just said. Okay. So is anyone prepared to make a motion? Yeah, I I make a motion. Just you, you to approve. To approve. To approve. I make a motion to approve the resolution to that adopt. to what? To adopt. To adopt. Okay. Make a motion to adopt the resolution to establish. Um, what are we establishing? Um, a summer state youth uh, council pilot program for the period of January 2024 through May 2024. Perfect. So, uh, do you want to amend the? This is just a question of it before we second it. Do you want to amend it to take away the minimum GPA and the register to vote? Well, that's not in the contract. Not there. Not there. Not there. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. So it's literally a technical submission. Is there a second? Is that new second? Is there a discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor. Aye. All those in favor. Thank you. Next item to consider introduction of a resolution establishing support for state legislation that authorizes the use of stop sign monitoring systems in municipalities. Mr. Deputy Tim. Uh, yes, this was the this was discussed at the last work session, uh, with, and I believe that at that meeting it was thought that it would be introduced at this meeting to allow further further discussion on the matter between the council. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so, President Mister, do you have any questions? Um, no. Remember, this is just the introduction. Right. Right, this is just introduction. It's really not a discussion. Right. Council Member Barr, do you have any questions? Uh, no, no questions. Councilor Heller. No questions. Councilor Kumar. Um, no questions. Councilor Roadmap. Uh, no questions. Are you prepared to make a motion? I, so I move that we approve the, uh, introducing the resolution to establish support for state legislation that authorizes the use of stop sign monetary systems and also authorizes town officials to issue citations. Is there a second? All those in favor? Thank you. That's so introduced. So, so I think you say at this point we decide uh, who would like to write. Um, an article the yeah, or I'll, the staff can. Robin really should. He's on the traffic committee. I'll be happy to do the traffic committee. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Elizabeth might want to, you know, work with him on it. Okay, yeah, thank I'll you. I'll run it by Next item to consider introduction of a credit amendment clarifying stormwater drainage requirements and requiring a permit for driveway installation. Mr. Decker, it's very good. This is also this was also legislation briefly discussed or I at the last work session uh, being brought for the council to introduce it. And Mr. Mayor, I would just add the council members will note there are two versions in the packet. One is the version that was originally drafted 
at the work session, the second version makes a slight change on the last page in response to comments at the work session, which would provide that if a driveway, once constructed, has a 5% or more slope as a result of a change in topography during the project, then the applicant would need to retain from the driveway the amount of stormwater runoff that would have been captured at pre-construction grade if permeable materials had been used. So option one says you need a variance. Option two says you've got to engineer retention of what you would have captured if the driveway was not increased in size. So are you recommending it's not in our package? I don't know what happened. No. This was not in the package. It skips from six to eight. This should be number seven. Oh, well, I, I'm, I'm, well, no problem. I'm looking at the council packet that Matt sent me. You're lucky. Yeah. Yeah. See? <laughs> it just might not have gotten loaded up. Yeah, yeah I thought I would. I, yeah, it's not here. Oh. Well, I had it the other day. Okay, so, no, but, but, so thank you for walking us through. Mm -hmm. I mean, we discussed it all. Well, I'd like to see so, the document. Right, sorry. Can you, can you, can you yeah. hold on to it? Mr. Kennedy, yes. are you recommending that the council introduce this revised amendment? So, Mr. Mayor, I don't have a recommendation on option one or two. I think, I think where the council was probably leaning after the work session was version two. Mm -hmm. and version one would create an administrative burden because you'd be setting up more variance hearings potentially. So option two would avoid that because mm -hmm. you know, we just made an yeah. always request a variance that we can't do that. So we can't do okay, so why don't I why don't I uh, run through the council to ask questions? And I could read the exact text of version two if that would help Mr. Why don't you do that? I'm also so, emailing it to all the council. Okay. So you all have seen okay, that I will have integrated access to the email from well, why don't we have Ted attorney clarify? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So everyone saw at the work session version one, which provided that a waiver was required, and they said if the slope of the driveway was altered because of a construction project. So instead of that waiver language, five percent. Yes, sir. So instead of that waiver language, version two provides if proposed construction involves alteration of the pre-construction slope such that the post-construction slope is 5% or more and permeable materials are not used. The volume of stormwater runoff from the driveway that would have been captured and treated at pre-construction grade if permeable materials would have been used must be captured and treated in accordance with section 112-14 D4A1 and 2, which is our tiering. So technically they could introduce both. That's right, Mr. Mayor. Sure. I mean, yeah. and then, and then, so, so we're grateful that our town attorney said so much more and our staff on this council yes. president. So, okay. again, the so, thank you very much for walking us through that. I think we should keep this as simple as possible. I think the option two is. Did you have a question? No, 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 no questions. Okay. I don't know this. Yes. Yes. Cancer and law. Sorry. No question. Cancer and law. No question. That's what we're tomorrow. Ron, what would be the impact of William II? You're going to illustrate potentially for us this for the record. Sure. And we can do it together, but that's sure. what I wanted to. So right now, said. right now the code provides a driveway with a slope greater than 5% does not have to be made of permeable materials because it's understood that stormwater will not be captured. So the question came up, well, what if a construction project results in the increase of the grade from the pre-construction grade? Should we require an applicant to get a variance from our permeable driveway requirement? That was version one. If a construction project involved the alteration of the grade to make it 5%, then a variance would be required. An applicant would have to explain why do you have to slope the grade like that instead of keeping it under 5% so you can have a permeable driveway? I'm under the assumption that they might be doing that in order to skirt around the requirement for a permeable driveway about 5%. Right. Below 5%. Yeah. Below 5%. Below 5%. Right. Um, Correct. Yeah, one potential loophole. Yeah. And so option two 
would avoid the need for that applicant to request a waiver and instead impose on that applicant a requirement to calculate the amount of runoff that would have been captured if the driveway remained at its pre-construction grade and permeable materials were used. Got it. So and so, so for example, if in the pre-construction, it was less than 5%, correct? Yes. It was 4%, the grade. And now post-construction is 6%. We would want okay. to know what? We would want to see a stormwater drainage plan that reflected our four percent. Assuming it was four and a half percent, right? Our four and a half percent driveway, if made of permanent materials, would capture, treat, and retain one hundred and twenty cubic feet of, of volume of water. Our post-construction driveway is six percent. It's not going to capture anything. So, in order to capture that one twenty. Cubic feet, is that what I said? 120. <laughs> we're we're doing something else. We're putting in a level spreader and taking the water from the driveway and making it infiltrate into the front lawn or what have you, or a rain garden. Or... So the effective calculation includes now roof and driveway runoff. Correct. Yeah, the stormwater drainage plan would show here's what we're doing with the downspouts and here's what we're doing with our six percent driveway. Right, it, it's on, it's conditional because no, only, only if the driveway is deep in height. Then you might want to give any other questions. That's good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Ezra Rowe, do you have any questions? I don't. Okay, thank you. I will now turn it over to our seniors. That's a precedent. Thank you. So I got to hit my question. What, what, if any, you want to introduce to her? So this is just introduction, but I am comfortable moving forward with introducing option two, which probably impacts very few construction projects. But for those two that does impact, it seems to make sense to me. And we can discuss the details next week. But I think it's worth introducing and starting that clock tonight. Um, yeah, right. Option two gives them a way out. Um, without going through the variance process, which is contentious and difficult. So, I, I, I agree. I mean, I'm, I, I, it's okay to, to, to put this for me. I'm just wondering the scenario where it's a minor grade change. Right. It was four and a half percent, not five percent. You know what I mean? Like that oh, and, and minor have, stuff would fall under this too, right? Yeah, they don't have too much water though. So. It should be fine to calculate and reflect that. But it's a surface area, right? It's not the flow of the water. It's the full surface area of the driveway. It's, it's if this is, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead, Councilman. It's first. whatever would have been captured under the old driveway if the old driveway was. But the there. surface of that driveway, it's the full surface yeah. area of that driveway. So it's, so well, it's, yeah, it's, it's not the slope, it's not what water, how water is treated by the slope. But the full it's, surface it's, area of the driveway, it, correct? Yeah. Well, the first ten feet are not included, but yes, in principle, yes. Yeah. And it's not a one-for-one -one calculation. You know, consider the surface area of the driveway, and say your your driveway driveway has a square foot area of X. Therefore, you need to capture X cubic feet of stormwater volume. Our stormwater engineer will calculate using the curved number for the permeable pavers, how much rainwater actually is infiltrated to come up with a, a volume metric measurement. Right. Exactly. Like the dry wells that are installed roughly capture only half the volume in water because the other half is solid rock. And some is going to run off in a one percent slope. And if it becomes too difficult for a builder to come up with a solution that conforms to this code and, and treats that water, additional water runoff that's created or whatever, um, then they can request a waiver. But, a, but we, we, we create a path forward. That's a good point. Maybe, I mean, we can move forward with where we go, but we have an engineer give us 
kind of a framework as a next working session. Yes. So that we I did speak to Matt, and Matt's plan was to ask Chris Sepp to take a look at this if introduced. And that would be great. That would be is. helpful. So we we I'm I'm always worried about you know all policy has unintended consequences and we cannot see them all. We can we see the ones that are the ones that are easy for us to grasp. So this should develop for that. Shannon? Um, I don't have any questions. Okay. So it sounds like you're prepared to make a motion to do something. So I move that we introduce a code amendment, option number two, clarifying the stormwater drainage requirements requiring permit for driveway installation. Okay, is there a Is that okay? Is there a Hearing that, I'll just favor. Uh, right. Okay, thank you. So, do you, do you like to write an article for the journal on this one? Yes, all right, John. Okay, excellent. Next item to consider introduction of a code amendment establishing a building height requirement for the main buildings. Mr. Yes, <clears throat> this is the work session. This is a code amendment establishing uh, building height requirements for main buildings. Okay, Mr. Mr. Council President. Oh, did you want to start? Just to add to that, Mr. Mr. Mayor. So Council Member Barr, prior to the work session, noted a, one change that should be made. Mayor should be changed to council with respect to who can issue the approval. I made that change, but it looks like the old version is still in the right the drive. Just wanted to point that out. Because everybody understands, right? Okay, Mr. Council President, do you have any questions? I have no questions. Councilor yeah, Barr. Right, but assuming we're voting on the new version, which we can't see at the moment, but all right. The only change is that we're changing mayor to town council. I think that's right. mm -hmm. We'll get assurance from the town attorney. That's the change. Council member Keller. No question. Councilor Kumar. So I have two questions. Go okay. for it. And I'm speaking to him wrong. I think that at the work session, you know, there were a couple of questions. One was uh, how do we arrive at the 33 feet? Are we comfortable with the foundations of that? And I think we were supposed to get after the work session, you know, a better rationale for that, which I don't believe we got. It was wonderful. But, uh, and second is that, you know, we don't have, there's been these thoughts we've had. I understand they've not been kind of directional, but this idea that every street is different potentially. And, What's the implication of this on, on on how we think about the? I think it was Shannon who brought that up. How do we think about the differences? I don't think we are reflecting that. Yeah. And I, I I don't know how we would, but I, I, we are not reflecting that here. Um, and so I I'm, I'm as I, I was saying at the work session, I think we need to establish a height. I think we need that framework, but I think this is has huge implications for future construction. And I think it, has, it may also give residents some, you know, sort of consternation around what this means for the existing home. So I, I would like this to maybe require one more round of research and justification before we trigger it for my own comfort level. Obviously, you guys can move forward with it, but I, I would prefer to get comfortable with why we're picking the height level with anyway I mean, before, before, sorry before you yeah before you said me do you have any questions that is the do question do you have any specific questions of the town attorney yeah how did we establish you know we we had asked for sort of a further clarification on the on the high requirement threshold on how we came to it because I think the response to the work session was oh that's what it was in Martin's edition Oh, we looked at a sampling of homes. I, admittedly, I felt we, we could go a little further. We may end up at the same place, frankly, but given the implications of this, I would want us to be a little bit more robust in how we go about it. And so just kind of reminding us how we arrived at that, I guess is my question. Anyway, sure. then, so then, yeah, then. my instructions were to prepare an ordinance modeled after the Martin's Editions ordinance, which is what I did. So as you said, this is a potential adoption of the standard that Martin's Editions found appropriate. However, staff did provide 
the report reflecting, I think it was six homes. And I recall the discussion. I apologize. I don't recall whether there was a resolution as to whether further homes should be studied by my town staff or not. Do you recall that? Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> the town manager uh, has said that if the council wishes for a townwide sur survey of building heights, that can be done, but it will uh, between now and next month. Just one more left for a town wide survey. I would, I mean, so we can come back and discussion, but so, I would offer that that would be. Yeah, so would you can use that as your argument yeah. against introducing this. Scenario. But did you, and it's, so this would be your questions. Do you have any other questions? Yes. And the, uh, the issue, maybe Shannon will bring, let me, I'll, I'll let Shannon ask this question. But Shannon, I brought up this sort of what does this mean street by street? How are we thinking? Has there been enough further thinking on that by the town staff? The, the idea that not all streets may require the same threshold. I understand it's hard to practically implement that, but I'd love to know if there's been any thinking on that. So if I could ask Ron to explain how the, this code, as I understand it, does just that, because it re the allowable building height is variable according to the street that you're building. Right, so as written, there would be a max height of 33 feet, measured to the highest point of roof surface or 28 feet measured to the knee. But the council could grant an additional up to two feet on both of those measurements based on the established building height of houses on the street. So, um, hold so on, hold on a second. I'm done. Hold on. You're done. Okay, Councilor Rebeck, your turn. So, so is the, Montgomery County restriction 35 feet. Yes. And um, I think that, you know, the manager's report really said that there was just maybe one, potentially one house that would have been triggered by this, I think, um, Kabir. Okay. I, I think it was just the one on the corner of Wisconsin and Cumberland. Like it had some sort of something that was a little too high. Um, and then, so if you were to put a second story on, you know, one of the houses on, um, on the, on one of the streets that has more of the, um, mid-century modern houses, you couldn't put a third story on there and still be under 33 feet. Is that what you guys understand? We ask the tenants, right? Or the well, I mean, I'm here. asking, I guess, everyone, if anyone knows. Maybe Doug has some experience. I can I can speak to our house, mid-century model. We added another one. Here. I think our height is 25 feet. Yours is 25? 25 feet, not including the chimney height, which is but well, up to the roof line is 25 feet. I can't imagine we could add another level that and that it wouldn't run in violation of this, right? Right. Automatically. Yeah. So I think that, that. Yeah. So, so I think, you know, Kabir, so I feel like that does kind of limit then the neighbor, you know, like if, if someone can put just one level on top of those houses. Yeah. That, that kind of helps solves like that in a way. So you don't have a huge, gigantic high house next to you know, a, a one story. Um, so I think it does kind of solve for that a bit. Okay, do you have any other questions? No, I have no other okay, questions. I just, before, before, uh, oh, I'm sorry. The, you, on that point, so before we, I got a second round. So I I do want to um, uh, ask the town attorney. So, so, because Councilor Kumar mentioned something about um, exit, how this would affect existing buildings. I assume they're grandfathered in. So with respect to existing buildings, they'd be developmental nonconformities, which are structures that were lawful when built, but rendered nonconforming as a result of a code change. Obviously, they don't need to be torn down, reduced in size. Developmental nonconformities are allowed to remain. 
if they were ever torn down and replaced, the replacement would need to conform to the code and unless the new code, unless the council were to add a grandfathering provision that allowed in kind of replacement as well. So, so does that clear up here? That helps. Okay. So the other thing, another dimension of that is so let's say somebody uh, just builds a new house right now and then it burns down. So could would it would be you know like next year would there would there be a way to write in there that the council can grant a variance under certain conditions? Yes, because you know, yeah, yeah. that might be you know with climate change, yeah. it could be a, who knows what could happen. And so you wouldn't really want to penalize somebody that that just built a house right before we changed this that then their house burned down. So. Did you want to say I'm sorry, but I'm going to go on to say, do you have any further questions? No, before you do it. That's one part. Do you have any questions? No, I do have a question. Um, how, when we make a height, let's say we do this, you know, just like Martin's edition did, it was 35, 33 feet, whatever. So, with what's coming our way in development with Thrive 2050 and the ZTAs are going to come our way where they're going to allow developers to come in and you know, do multi-story, um, you know, uh, dwellings. Mm -hmm. Do they have to, even though the county may have changed the co the zoning to allow for this, will they have to conform to our height um, requirements? So an applicant will have to comply with both the county and town requirements. I would, well, I've I've written, some information that I'd like to share with the council and we're probably worth a discussion in closed session when we have a little more time for the legal advice. But I mean, in a nutshell, an applicant has to comply with both. What the county will probably do under Thrive Montgomery is similar to what was done for accessory dwelling units, implement zoning text amendments that change the rules under special circumstances. So they may say, for example, you know, a multi-family dwelling may have additional height than you know, 35 foot height for a single family home in order to encourage. May I suggest that we do this in a closed session to walk through this scenario? Yeah. Because you did submit a memo to us, I saw yes. that. And I think we should, it was in the working session packet. Okay. Right. Okay, well, does that need to be decided by the way? No, no, it doesn't need to decide right now, but yeah, we should have a okay, close. Do you, do you have any? No, that was my question. Yes, sorry, sorry. I appreciate that. That was a question on my mind. I do think it is important for us to have full sense of that uh, because I think there are some yeah, considerations there and we should do a session on that for sure. Uh, no, I think that my main question was maybe just to follow up, EJ, just to confirm we are able to do it truly in a month's time. <laughs> Uh, of a uh, townwide survey. Uh, the town manager stated that um, it could definitely be started. He would have to uh, work with Doug specifically to create a timeline, but he believes that at least a good amount of it could be done. Let me ask the town attorney a quick follow up on that. Let me just also oh, add. So let's say, uh, so your question is at this time. Yeah, so let's say that that can't be accomplished. Then then the legislation can be reintroduced later. You have to go. So that can be your. That was a follow up question I had for yeah. Ron. But I also wanted to ask Ron does he recommend that we do some form of a town wide survey on the, the foundations of this legislation, given your experience with other towns? Sure. So I would say those municipalities that first implemented the authority granted in 2006, did have studies done to help guide their decision-making. Chevy Chase Village hired an architect from Vermont. Town of Chevy Chase hired Christian Kubiak. Why is the Vermont point significant? Oh, it gives him prestige. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry, that was the Italian. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and um, 
Town of Chevy Chase used Chris Jakubiak, an urban planner from Annapolis who hired on Studio 57 Architects. And they walked around the towns and took samples and prepared diagrams. And that was very helpful. And you know, if legislation's ever challenged, it's nice to have that supporting material in the background. That said, the other communities have done it. And in certain instances, you can reasonably rely on that. And here we know the county standard is 35. And so if the council finds based on experience, 35 is too much, I think you can also reasonably look at a house that's 33 and you, know, you, you all walk the neighborhood and, and have a general sense of what's what's compatible with respect to mass scope and design. So it, so it, quick, either way. I quick follow-up on that. Yeah. So get you to draw a line in the sand. The, we've had some legislative, I mean, uh, uh, you know, some litigation. Um, you know, so we are exposed to litigation. At least in my two years, we've had at least one, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so I'm wondering, is, is it reasonable to say that having this process done and supported with a town-specific analysis would protect us from potential litigation? It, not the it, act it, of litigation, but give us the ability to, to kind of counter it with more substance. It would add protection, but as I said before, I'm I'm not convinced we actually need that protection for a two foot reduction from the county standard in building height. And we're also not unique that state other municipalities have got this code there already. So right, yeah, and then these are compatible or comparable communities. I mean, that said, I did reach out to Janico, the manager at Chemistry's View. Yes. Their town hired Chris Jakubiak in 2015 mm -hmm. to provide a survey. And I you asked if she could share the cost. I have a copy of the contract, but not his his cost scope of work readily available. So once I have that, I'll let you know what that one, was. One quick last question. We are not saying hire external, we are saying leverage dollar mm -hmm. to do this. Okay. Okay, thank you. Good Can't swear right back. Do you have any questions? <clears throat> I don't. Okay, thank you. And now we'll turn it over to our distinguished council president. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so I want to thank our town attorney for pulling together our various thoughts and the town staff for doing some, some background surveys um, to help us understand how the municipalities were going to understand. Um, I'm ready to proceed with introducing this. I think this will be a topic of interest to the town. Perhaps I should make my article a, a twofer covering both both topics of buildings. Um, because it would be valuable to get some feedback from the town before we make a change that could start to impact the what do you call it, the size scope for structure of the buildings in the town, even if just slightly. Um, but I'm ready to introduce it and then we can discuss it further next month and then. If the majority of the council next month feels that we need more time or just disagrees with the concept completely because of town input, then we can postpone it or or slow it down at that time. But I'm in favor of introducing new assets. We have more than one month, right? We have 60 days. To, we have 30 days to adopt. We have 60 days. 60 days before you need to reintroduce. So we're good. Yeah. yeah. Just just to clarify. Oh, yeah. yeah. My desire is to get this going as soon as we can, because even once, assuming we vote on it, doesn't that start another clock with the county before it becomes effective? So with respect to building regulations, yes, we do need to share those with the county council and allow 30 days for the county to comment before we have our hearing and take action. Got it. Right. So if you, if you introduce it tonight, Sorry, I, I would send it to the county just to start that club right thank you and I, I will add the grandfathering provision as recommended by the mayor which provides that in the event of a casualty loss of 50 percent or more the house the nonconformity can be rebuilt that's standard language that casualty that 50 percent or more i know that's in the town chair chase and church chase village every week for others okay thank you 
But maybe there should be a time on that or 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 restricted to the person that you know, make sure it's the same owner. Maybe you know, replaced because I mean, the same owner within a so six months. I, because I mean, you wouldn't want to be open. You know, um, I mean, you all have to decide. Good point. But I don't think it should be open yet. Anyway. Um, yeah, I, I'm happy to see it introduced now. Um, we've had residents concerned about building height back now for a couple of years. Um, and so we're moving kind of late now already on, on their concerns. So moving it along briskly is probably the right thing to do. Um, that, that's pretty much it. And they, they, it's not much of a change. I think we should introduce. I think we're ready to do that. It's a long process, it sounds like. But let's get going. I'm comfortable introducing it under the condition that we see the building survey done for it to be adopted. And I'm assuming that's reasonable because we know that it can be done by the college. Okay. If the survey is ready by next month, I'd enjoy looking at it. I don't actually expect that that data will influence my my vote one way or the other. So you... I, I would so all I'm trying to say is if if that survey is not complete, I do not believe that that would mean we automatically postpone voting on the you know, do we have to pay for a survey? So, so that's a good question because yes, I, I, don't think the, I don't think the council has authorized the survey yet. And don't they need to pay for something? Yeah, you would pay. You would pay Doug. And, and unless, unless Doug's going to do it Doug. for free, are you on the line, Doug? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, so, I think I think that, but I think that it, I don't think that it's in budget. We're talking a couple of hours to look at some plans. Or it's not in the budget as a line item. Yeah, but I think. But I be... believe it would probably fall in yeah. the envelope of the contingency line that the yeah, description yeah. of the town manager. But yeah, let's ask does, does the uh, Mr. Tetra, does the tenant manager have the ability to perform that survey without yes, the council approval, right? Well, the, the money has to have been appropriated. I'm not familiar enough with your budget to be able to offer an opinion as to whether there is a line item that he could pull from. Yeah, yeah. The the continuous air line item that's pretty clear. Well, I doubt this survey will cost thirty. But I would, uh, but I think I still think the council would need to approve use of that contingency because it hasn't been appropriated for that specific right. purpose. Yeah. And I also think that uh, I wonder if it falls under our procurement. Oh. That's 20 k over. And we're talking about using the okay. town. You're, yeah. It, it's, it would be under an existing contract. Okay. If we so I, I do think I do think based on what you're saying, it, it would probably be um doable. There's no reason why the council couldn't approve that that's fine. No, that so that way, Matt. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. So does that Yes. So yeah. is that just to figure out how many houses are over that right now or something? Yeah, well, I think when you, I think when you, uh, whatever you're going to approve, you should be specific about what you want to do. Yes. Because I, or is this the character? I, I think there's, I think you all have a lot of questions. I, you know, I don't think you totally clarified exactly what it was. I think you want to get certain information. So there's no reason why you shouldn't make that decision tonight. All right. So, don't you agree, Mr. Denver? Yes, Mr. It might be beneficial. For so, us. Kabir, can you just define what you're looking for in this study? And then we can see if that's something we're ready to approve. Our current proposal is based on uh, the height from Martin's addition. And I would like it to be based on a survey of uh, Calm's properties. And uh, if it's like a meaningful sample, maybe 30 to 40 percent rather than six to seven. Properties, which is less than five percent of town properties, that gives us a good size, a good sense of the average height, a 
across all major cities, three different accounts. And I suspect that we will come roughly to the same figure, but we will be, we will sort of support a uh, case in the face of any questions on this legislation going forward. And it may, Mr. Mayor, it may be worth saying we'd like to see X number of houses. Yeah, yeah that's what so I was saying. Do you all decide? Per block, maybe. So I, I'm happy to do, I'm, I mean, I'm open to that. I haven't thought about it, but I, you know, I, I, at least 30% per street, 30% of houses per street would be. Would be yeah, and if, if there are not building plans available, then someone's got to go out with a. That's what I think this is. A laser yeah. measure on the houses. Okay, so do you, does the council want to vote on this um, survey before you vote on whether you're interested? Just so, so the survey would be to. Let me re to re re establish the. The height, whether it's the the, the high, total high, high highest mean, point or the mean height that was used for the permit, or so we can understand where we stand today. When you say permit, are you talking about the new houses that have been built? All the houses in the town had a permit at some point in time, but we may not. We might not have, have permits, yeah. right? Yeah. Huh. Well, I mean, what I'm. I don't know how many of our minds would be changed by the result of the survey is, is the issue. I don't think my mind would be changed. I'd also keep, if we're going to do the survey, keep it very specific. Um, so I would say something like uh, only survey the tallest two homes on each street. Um, right. You know, so that it is you're collecting the sample of the tallest homes at that point, um, which is probably the most useful information. Are there any homes so in the town that we know of? That are taller than thirty-five feet. Yeah, but I think you want, you, you definitely want that covered. But I think to define it to be a sensible study, I think you would want to set some threshold, like you know, twenty percent or thirty percent of homes on every street. With what comes to my mind, we can change the threshold, and we we'll based on the permit data. I suspect we will get thirty percent of homes per street permit data. I'm, I'm surprised. No. Do we? I guess what I'm sitting here thinking is. Do I care? Because what I'm trying to do now, I, I think what we're trying to do I is set a think, standard yes. that makes sense for this community. And if you know so many percents are taller than we would want, well, so be it. Let's just bring it down for the new new building then, because we're not comfortable with having such big houses. No, I think we will we will know that. That's all I'm saying. We we can still propose with the limit, but we would have done a survey and would have been based on our understanding of what it is in our town versus what it is in Martin's edition, which is, you know, <laughs> I think our town will thank us for going out and doing a survey and understanding what the what the high coverage is. Arguably, I mean it would be nice for a street. I'd be happy to do town wide. At a certain percentage, but if it's first street, that would be great. That would be my thinking, Ron. How does that? What comes to your mind on what could be the building blocks of that survey? I mean, thirty percent on each street seems reasonable to me, but I do question whether permits are actually available, plans are actually available. Okay. I think it's probably going to require a lot of site visiting and, and measuring from the streets and I don't know how much time that's going to take. Um, you don't think we have permanent plan for... Well, that's going to that question. Do we, no, I think, um, would you go upstairs? Yeah, would you sure. be able to find a permit from when I renovated my house in 19... In, in, in 1999, I think? I think we have them, guys. Yeah. I, I, I think it would be fine. I, I don't think we have them for... A meaningful share, a meaningful share, and I think. So is what, this? So is this a more of a clerical job to begin with, or is this done going house to house? If you open, if you go through every house's file and you pull out, you know, our permits or whatever, maybe this is more of a clerical job. It's up to Doug to decide if he wants to go up or if he wants to use. I would use the data we have. That would be the shortest. Yeah. yeah. But can we see if? Where we are, I mean, that let's can we take a vote on how many of us want this survey to be appropriate and spend money on this survey? That's what it will. Well, this uh, this will this will make a motion for that this survey, authorizing the survey. 
I'm happy to maybe, maybe, maybe go ahead and ask. Yeah, go ahead and make a motion on the survey. So, uh, motion to conduct a townwide survey of building height uh, to inform a uh, potential court amendment to establish, establish a building height requirement for main buildings. Uh, the survey to cover 30% of homes per street in the town and to be completed uh, in the next month. That's okay, and you should put it down. Not to exceed something. Not to exceed twenty. Not to exceed ten thousand dollars. Yeah. In total cost. Okay. Is that? I don't think it would cost even that. Okay. And there, and that the money is on the contingency. Right. Thank yeah. You. To to be made available for the survey from the previously approved contingency fund for this facility. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, discussion. Um, well, we were just discussing it. Right? I know, but I have a question. Yeah. Cool. A quick question. Ron, do you think we should do this study? Uh, What's your legal opinion? Do you think we should do this study? Well, I'd like to give that, that to you. Question? I'd like to give that answer to you in closed session. Oh, okay. Similar to the we go in closed session. <laughs> oh, that's the thought. Do you recommend we go into closed session at this point as, as we discuss this topic? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Is there a motion? So I move to go into closed session. We have to give the reasons. So it's for like legal advice. To obtain legal advice. Yeah. Yeah. Motion to enter closed session pursuant to 3305B. I'm sorry, 3307 to obtain legal advice on a legal matter, namely potential amendments to the building code. Okay. okay. Um, is there a second? I second it. I mean, do you introduce it? He introduced it, I second it. That's <laughs> okay. Mark W. I'm just giving discussion. Yeah, no, no, it's a paper. It's a paper. Thank you, sir. Oh, I'm doing it because we're going to. Sorry. Sorry about that. You can come back in I mean, 10 I, minutes. Oh, no, I, I, thank you. I, I just want to do I'm, I'm building a new home. So I'm going to be here next week, I mean, next month. Oh, and you. so I just want to do it with you. Of, uh, thank you so much. Oh, make sure you sign it. 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 Sheet. Oh, then this is going to be good. Good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It's, we're going to be at a closed session if you want to come back. Oh, no. It's an agenda. Everyone except for him. Let me try. And turn the recording session. Welcome we, back. We are back in an open session. And, uh, is there a uh, did Councilor Kumar want to make a motion? I made a motion. So you made a motion. Seconded. Seconded. Oh, right. we were discussing what, what I would like to do is make a friendly amendment to the motion that we we direct the, the town staff, town engineer, to, to conduct this survey to a maximum extent practicable. I don't want to agree. Okay. thirty percent or eighty percent or whatever, because each street will be different. The records will be different, but let's get as much information as we can. I'm comfortable with that. We just have to understand, understand that amendment. Okay. Not, not to exceed ten thousand dollars, and we're here again. And oh, have uh, that. So okay, so do you, do you accept? Do you accept this friendly amendment? I accept the friendly amendment okay. to remove the thirty percent. And replace it with maximal practical maximum extent practical. Okay, do you is there a understanding with the motions there? I think so. Okay. Is there further discussion? All those in favor. Aye. Okay, thank you. Excellent. Okay. okay, now are you going to uh introduce the amendment? So oh and and, uh, and I I in the interim drafted the additional language on grandfathering. So I could read that now and it can be included in the introductory draft. Is, is someone prepared to introduce the... Um, yeah, I'd still like to introduce it. I think I'm now more flexible to extending an extra month. Okay, so you're good. introducing it with this new language. I'll read it. If that's yeah, right. just please. So currently, section D2 provides town grandfathering created. Any building existing on November 28, 1994, and which was law lawfully constructed, may be extended to the rear, provided that the extension is no closer to the side property line than the existing building, excluding permissible projections, and the extension otherwise complies with this article. 
except as provided in the previous sentence, new construction or an addition to an existing building must comply with this article. So it's that last sentence that will modify because right now if the house burns down, it can't be rebuilt. So we would add, except as provided in the previous sentence and except as stated in new paragraph three below, buildings existing prior to blank 2023. That date will be the date of introduction of this ordinance. Notwithstanding any provision of the contrary contained above, a building existing prior to that date that sustains a total, total physical loss or a substantial physical loss, 50% or more, due to accidental causes, including but not limited to fire, storm, falling trees, flooding, natural disaster, acts of war, or terrorism, may be rebuilt, provided the replacement building does not encroach any farther into any setback, the footprint is not larger than the previous footprint, and the height does not exceed the height of the prior building that's lost. Okay, so that's Correct. the, and then the kind of, uh, is there a second? Is there a second? Hearing none, all those in favor. Okay, so now it's introduced, and who is who wants to write the So I'm, I'll, I'll write one article. Never. I might separate it just so people, I would, but I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, so I'll write a few articles. I can okay. try this week. Okay, that's right. Okay, and our final uh, item is the manager report. And did you, did you have anything to add to the manager report? Okay. Okay. Council President, sir, do you have any questions? No questions. Thank you. Council Member Barr. No questions. Senator Heller. No questions. Senator Kumar. None. Thank you. What? Council Member <laughs> Roback. Any encourage. questions? No <laughs> questions. Okay, and if you do have any, of course, Matt will be back, I think, on, by Thursday. Mm -hmm. So please. I was going to say, I'm going to text my so Please text. Okay, with that, is your motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you all. Great thank meeting. You. Well, EJ did a great job.